Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is essentially the fat accumulation in the liver that's not directly related to alcohol consumption. It tends to be associated with diabetes and being overweight. Studies have shown that approximately 30% of the U.S. population is affected. Some of the risk factors for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease include being overweight, being obese, having diabetes, having high blood pressure, essentially having the components of the metabolic syndrome uh, places a person at risk for having fatty liver disease. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease could in theory be prevented by weight control and, and weight loss in the population. Uh, this is a disease that has really appeared in the last two to three decades, largely paralleling the rise of obesity in our country. To some degree, if, if we can eliminate the obesity epidemic, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is preventable. The reality is most people are asymptomatic. Uh, sometimes when the liver disease progresses to the point of cirrhosis, they may present with obvious liver problems like jaundice or ascites, and at which that point it's pretty apparent the patient has advanced liver disease. For most people who have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, it's oftentimes asymptomatic, oftentimes picked up on just routine blood testing, uh, which may prompt an ultrasound and evaluation to show that somebody has fatty liver disease. Not every patient has the same risk of progression. Uh, every patient is a little bit different. Some people may have more aggressive forms of fatty liver disease, which may have progressive fibrosis, which can culminate in cirrhosis, whereas other people may have more stable fatty liver disease, which either has no fibrosis or doesn't seem to progress. NASH is actually a subset of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So non-alcoholic fatty liver disease basically refers to everybody who has fatty liver disease. Non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, or termed NASH, really describes that subset of patients who have uh, what we generally consider to be more aggressive fatty liver disease. Uh, people who have inflammation, who have fibrosis and scarring, etc. This seems to be the subtype of patients with fatty liver disease that seem to be at a higher risk of progressing to cirrhosis. Simple recommendations that are oftentimes made to people with diabetes and high blood pressure, such as watching their diet, losing weight, these are some things that can help delay or reverse some of the fatty liver disease that's happening. We oftentimes recommend that people lose anywhere between 5 to 10 percent of their body weight to have an improvement in terms of their liver disease. Typically, the more weight one can lose, the more of the benefit that somebody will have. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is oftentimes diagnosed when blood tests are done and show some abnormalities in the liver tests. This may then lead to an ultrasound, which may then confirm the presence of fat in the liver. Oftentimes, doctors will exclude other causes of liver diseases. If everything else is negative in terms of evaluation for liver disease, a patient is overweight, the liver test pattern looks very typical for fatty liver, and there's an ultrasound demonstrating fat, oftentimes most clinicians are comfortable calling it non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. In terms of defining the patients who actually have NASH, which is that subset of patients with more aggressive fatty liver disease, oftentimes that requires a biopsy to determine which patients have that. First and foremost, diet and exercise should always be the first recommendations. If a person's able to lose about 10% of their body weight, they can have an improvement in their, in their liver function and the amount of liver damage that's happening.